3D highlights and shadows for text in Adobe Illustrator. Hey guys, Kerry Hawkins here with another VectorMade.com tutorial. Today I'm going to be talking about how do we add shadows and highlights to text in Illustrator to give it that three-dimensional feel. So before me I've got a rather thick script font, kind of a, a brush script, and um, this is what usually is going to work best for this technique, although it can work in others, but traditionally you're going to want, or typically you're going to want, a thicker font so that you have room to place the highlights in. Um, and you'll see kind of as we go what I mean. Um, so basically just type out the word that you want here, um, and I've just got cherry already, and I've got it all combined as one shape too, so that's something that you'll probably need to do as well. Um, and then go ahead and make a copy of it, so control C to make a copy, and then just paste it to the back or control B. And what you'll see is, is as I hit shift and the arrow keys, I'm pulling it away. You'll see it there, but it's behind this red um, background. So um, just go ahead and bring it up one by hitting control and right bracket, and you should see it there. Now, just so you can tell where it is in relation to the original, I'm gonna use this darker color here. So there we go, we've got our beginnings of our shadow, and I am going to bump it out one more. One more set down and, and to the right. And then I'm going to go Object, Path, Offset Path, and we're gonna bump this up probably 0 0.25, 0 0.25 inches. You may work in pixels or points, it doesn't really matter, just get something that looks good and just has a little bit of extra thickness to it. That looks really nice, um, hit OK. Go ahead and select the inside that you just made and delete it, and then select the one that was left over, which should be the thicker version. We're gonna copy this, Control C, and then paste it to the front, Control F. That's gonna go too far in the front, so then you're gonna hit Control and left bracket to send it back one. And then I would go ahead and color it the same as your background. And now that it's selected, I'm gonna hit Shift, up arrow, and left arrow a couple of times. Um, two each is gonna look good. And there I have it, that's what I want. The only change I'm gonna make is I don't like these little slivers in here. And so I'm gonna use my direct selection tool. You can do A, or you can come up here and grab it there. And I'm gonna select this little spot here and hit delete twice and do the same thing with this and delete twice. That basically just hides this part underneath um, from showing. And that looks really good for my shadow layer. Now, for the highlights, you're gonna do the same thing just in reverse, so you're gonna shrink it some. Grab your original, Control C to copy it, Control F to paste to the front. Let's go ahead and give it this lighter color. And then I'm gonna go Object, Path, Offset, excuse me, Offset, Path. And we're gonna come in, probably minus 0.25, go ahead and hit Preview, that's gonna be really good. You don't want it quite as thick. And I'm gonna hit OK. I'm gonna select the background part, the thickest part, hit Delete. You should be left with the thinner section here that you just made. Go ahead and grab that, hit Control C to copy and Control F to paste to the front. Um, you can make this another color if you want just so you can see what you're doing. Um, and then hit Shift and down and Shift and right, maybe just once each. Probably that's all we're gonna do. And then you're gonna select this new light pink air, uh, object and you're gonna select the new one that you just made. Come over here to your Pathfinder. If you can't find that, it's under Window and Pathfinder. And then you're gonna hit the second button under Shape Modes, which is minus front. It will take whatever's in the front away from whatever's behind it. And there you go, you've got your highlight. Now, what I would do here as well is get your Direct Selection tool again, Hotkey A and go ahead and just delete these little pieces that show up that aren't very attractive, like this one here. And I think that's gonna do it, yeah. Now you could go through here and also like clean up a few places here where it's just not quite perfect. But for the purposes of this tutorial, that's gonna work just great. And what, the, what that does is anytime you have a darker color um, relative to whatever other color you're talking about, it's going to look like it's further inward, which gives it that three-dimensional appearance. So 
you know, the darkest part is going to be this dark here shadow, and it looks like it's further in than the rest of the graphic, right? It looks like it's a drop shadow. And the same thing with this kind of um, light pink on the inside of the white, it looks like it's recessed. And if you want to switch that, I'll show you what it looks like if we change the white to the light pink, and then we grab the previous light pink and we make it white, now it's going to look a little bit more bubbly. So this way, a little more recessed, this way, a little bubblier. So let me know what you guys thought of that tutorial. If this is helpful to you, like, subscribe, share, do all that awesome stuff. And I will see you guys in the next video.